<clears throat> Dr. Vic Eslon is with the Washington University Extension and manages the OSU Control Quality Lab in Southern Ohio at Piketon, Ohio. And he has a very unique lab that does a lot of soil quality tests that are not usually done in you know, the normal soil tests for phosphorus potassium. He can get into all different parameters that you really need to understand soil quality. We'll talk about that. Today we're going to focus on looking at cover crop species and what happens when you combine more than one type of cover crop together and the benefits you get out of those soil quality benefits. With that, Dr. Is. Usually, problem with the slide setting. I was asked to give a talk on cover crop cocktail. You know, we use rye or beet or clover, but when you combine all different types of cover crop, how they work, <coughs> so and how they affect soil or crop yield or soil biology. So that's what we are going to talk. So before I go into that, one of my research related to cover crop on sustainable land funded by North Central Selling. So they asked me to talk a little bit about that. So I have some slides to explain those results, what we got in different states in the Midwest, what farmers are thinking, and after that, we'll move into the main talk. Is that okay? Let's start. Okay, so I have to talk about Sally project ENC 118 that is to develop professionals so they can train farmers or help farmers to follow sustainable act. So that's what I'm going to talk first. So this is a project we got funded. It's training the trainers on sustainable act. So what we got? We got our resources, which are sun, that means the light, main powerhouse in the world or ecosystem. Then we got air and water, and we got soil. Soil, good soil, only 10% good soil we can use to grow crops. And water, less than 3%, fresh water. So you can imagine, how less resources we have in terms of good quality. So that's why we said how we are going to manage this. <coughs> and all these resources come through sunlight, utilizing rainwater and nutrients from the soil, produce food, feed, fiber, and energy. And everything based on carbon. So as a whole, life on earth based on carbon. So if you manage carbon, you manage the ecosystem. And that's also one of the important components of organic farming, sustainable farming or natural farming. Manage carbon, that is organic matter. So current agriculture production, although it is very productive, it will give you a lot of good production, 200 bushel corn, 60 bushels soybean, but it affects our production. How? Over the years, it will affect your farm economics and ecosystem services. That means poor soil quality, bad air. Yeah. If you go to China, you'll see everybody has masks of the pollution and also the water quality. And as a whole, it affects us. When you drive on the highway during summer, 
it says ozone alert because ozone is bad for asthma those people are suffering from respiration problem ozone affects them and how it produces all these activities what we are doing releasing carbon dioxide nox and it creates this situation so managing ecosystem based on carbon is the management of our survival and we have to think about again how how we are going to use our equipment we have, we have too much equipment so how we are going to use equipment and also we have to diversify crop that is polyculture and then we have to think about using reactive fertilizer that means nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers and also toxic chemicals those are hormones or pesticides insecticides so as a whole all kinds of thing what we are doing we have to think about that again and again as a result of our activities which i had mentioned yesterday during our workshop conventional way of farming creating some kind of circular degradation that is we plow with lot of mechanization use, use fertilizer and that created loss of organic matter compacted soil and poor healthy quality and as a, as a result lot of diseases started to develop and that makes the plant unhappy so plants are not productive or they don't like to be that way and when plants are not productive or they are unhappy it will affect your biodiversity and disease causing organism so as a result you apply more pesticide and that pesticide again in a circle affect your biodiversity and as a result of biodiversity again you are getting the poor quality soil so it's a cycle so that you get out of that cycle just i just give you one example this is if you use 100 gallon of gasoline in your tractor or any kind of mechanization what you are going to get you will get 92 to 120 pounds of water out of every 100 gallons of gas and you will get 3 to 10 pounds of carbon shoots the black shoots then you will get 1 and 1/2 pounds to 2 pounds of uh what do you call it? yeah shoots and then 1/4 to 1 pound of varnish the chemicals last of all you will get 1 to 4 pounds of nitric and sulfuric acid can you imagine that when you burn 100 gallons of gas in your tractor or your car or your any mechanization you are getting 1 to 4 pounds of sulfuric acid and nitric acid so you can imagine what we are releasing into the atmosphere this is gas not diesel uh, diesel is more okay. this is petroleum so diesel is more thicker and more contaminants it should be triple okay. just an example that what is coming out so look at this slide so we that's what we said conventional tillers is making ecosystem services farm productivity soil health declining to the red line and whereas sustainable act which we are thinking should be enhancing and that's what we will see lot of i could use this one lot of organisms different types of plant the arrows are thicker and bigger compared to the conventional side so that's what we want to be achieve so that's the project we have that based on sustainability what would be our objective what we have to do so idea is to train professionals to conduct multi state workshop so they can be trained on sustainable act and they can teach and help farmers to follow or adapt that system so that was the idea so what we have done our target audience was extension educator teachers nrcs and epa personnel soil and water conservation people county official 
crop consultant, ag business people, and progressive farmers, farm leaders. So our expected outcome, short term, that the train the, the professionals who are going to train, they will become more and more aware of sustainable ag, and they will get knowledge and learn new techniques so they can help farmers. That is the short term outcome. And the medium outcome or intermediate outcome, once they get this training, these professionals are going to develop and implement some programs to assist farmers, like workshop, field day, demonstration. And also these professionals will help farmers to shift conventional farmer into sustainable or natural farming system by removing roadblocks. That, that means they are going to help farmers where I can get the cover crop seed, how many seed, I, how many pounds I need, when I have to plant, this kind of thing, ready to use information. And long term outcome was that about 20 to 30% of the farmers in North Central region will adapt sustainable ag in the next 10 to 15 years after this training to the professionals. And once they increase this number of farming or farmers involved, then with greater improved economics and ecosystem services, the farm income or the farmers income or as a whole rural, rural economy will improve. So that was all this outcome. So we shared the resources, the resources we use, we got resources from SARI, they funded us, and we got volunteers, they contributed more than 600 hours, and the funds also leveraged by Ohio State University, Michigan State University, University of Minnesota, NRCS, Soil and Water Conservation, and CTC, Conservation Tillers Conference, and also Agriculture Solutions in Canada. So Canadian, they came and they said, you have to organize this workshop for us also. So we did that. But what we did, we organized three workshops for NRCS people in Illinois. So we trained more than 250 people in Illinois. And Michigan, around 170, 178 people were trained. Minnesota, we got 123. Ontario, Canada, we got 267 people trained. And in Texas, in Ohio, maybe a few hundred, four to five hundred people. And Texas, we trained about 42 people. So altogether, you can see about thousand people we trained through this program, and we distributed the material more than thousand copies. And also in uh, developing a website so farmers can have access. So what results we got? We have some survey. We found that most of the participants are consultant, ag consultant, and the second category is university extension educator and dealers, agriculture dealers. And we got some farmers also. Fifteen percent people are farmers. They were trained by our workshop, but most of the people, around uh, 45 to 48 percent of the participants, that means around 450 to 480 people are trained professionally, either professional people. And we ask them about the satisfaction of the workshop, what we have. So you can see around 40, 85 percent said they are very satisfied or satisfied. Few of them they didn't like, around 5% people. <laughs> and knowledge gain, look at this, uh, I mean, look at this uh, slide. People are looking about 21st century agriculture, new kind of agriculture they are looking for. So almost 23% people, they are asking for new kind of information for agriculture. Cover crop. What's called? Yeah, nitrogen management cover crop. Look at this blue, dark blue. Crop rotation. 
the pink one. So we got a lot of people there are asking for conservation tillage, cover crop, and some information about sustainable agriculture. So that gives us satisfaction with our project activities and how much they learn. And we ask, you know, what kind of soil properties you think are important? So look at that. Most of them said biological properties or soil biology is the most important. And for organic or sustainable ag or conservation ag or natural production system, biology is the main thing. And physical and chemical more or less same. But biology, most of the people said it's important. And then we ask what single parameters of soil is important for maintaining soil health as a part of sustainable air. Almost 48% said organic matter. That means if you manage organic matter, you are good. And that's what I told you, life based on earth, carbon, that is organic matter. And you know that, and farmers know, the professionals, they know. And then we ask what kind of management system would be good for sustainable ag to improve soil quality. Almost 30% says conservation tillage and around 25 and so around 55 to 58% said cover crops and crop rotation. These are the important part. Again, they are talking about organic matter. Cover crop means organic matter biodiversity, disease suppression, this kind of thing. So that's why I thought I should have given my talk on the basis of our funding and the research to move ahead with a cover crop talk. So I'll come to my talk now. <laughs> I have to reach math. <laughs> so, so what would be the sustainable organic production or sus any sustainable production? What do you think? Some of you I know you have been in my uh, last uh, yesterday's workshop. Main thing is noting that should be continuous noting. That means you do it this year and next year you do it plowing. So no till corn, no till soybean and then you and plow and have corn. So that is not no till. No till means absolute no till, no disturbance. But for organic production, we know that you cannot have no till. I'll show you some slide. Our organic system based on no till didn't work. You have to plow to get rid of weed and something. So we need some balance. We are not totally against tillage, maybe minimum tillage. But if you use cocktail, it will suppress and you'll see the result. But I have to go a little bit fast. So second part is crop rotation, that is a sustainable ag component. The third one is crop rotation, uh, cover crop. And the last one we thought nutrients or amendment. What kind of nutrient or new type of amendments we can use in sustainable production system to enhance the nutrient use efficiency. So you don't have to apply that much. You can reduce the cost of your production system. So look at few organic uh, pictures from organic farm in Ohio. And if you look at that, you'll see there are some compaction here. that plowed again and maybe rain and it dispersed the soil and it compacted. Look at the yellow color of the crops and how many weeds we have. So sometimes you have that because weed is a part of the system. And for hundreds of years, we have been using pesticide, herbicide. We could... Oh, thank you. So look at this slide and you'll see that farmer tried to do as much as possible, but weed is part of the system. For hundreds of years, I mean last 60-70 years, we have been using all kinds of herbicide, Roundup, string herbicide and all these. We could take out weed, we make them resistant. So weed, we can just minimize their effect. We cannot totally eliminate them. So we have to live up with that. 
So some of this organic system, we have to think about how we are going to manage this and make it more productive and suppress weed. Look at this, our research in USDA and OSU Koshakton, it's a large plot. <coughs> Look at that. This is clover, this is cowpea, but this grass is see, foxtail millet because it was dry. Last year it was dry and dry means foxtail millet will come, millet will be abundant. And look at here, all this, in this one, we have radish, cowpea, mixed together, but foxtail millet everywhere. So you need something which can suppress and control the weeds and diseases. One single cover crop cannot do that. So that's why we thought cocktail would be better solution. So why we plant cover crop? Main thing is we have to cover the ground to suppress the weed, keep the moisture and homegrown nitrogen so we can get nitrogen like we are producing at home. Add organic matter and recycle nutrients, diversify organisms, suppress weeds and diseases, reduce surface erosion and soil loss and also use cover crop as a plow, biological plow. That means if you don't go for no-till, we'll be using radish, deeper radish or carrot to make hole into the soil so we'll have good drainage and removing the compaction. So that's the ideas. And also it provides mulch, dry season. You'll see one slide, 2012 uh, August, it was dry. You know, the high, it was the most extreme drought in the United States. In 2012, remember that August, you see the moisture content in the soil, how cover crop mulch conjure. So, and when we can use cover crop, look at the plant growing season. This is the main cropping season and the spring and the fall before winter. Those are the good windows for growing cover crop. And also in the autumn, if you have wheat, you can go start in summer even, July. So we thought that cover crop can take this part, winter cover crop in the fall, and that will continue in the spring, all the way early spring. And also you can plant in the summer after harvesting wheat to minimize that gap. So you extend that the cover leaving cover on the surface of your soil. Look at some of this slide. So on, on the cover crop, buckwheat is the fastest growing cover crop. It takes 30 days to go to full growth. 45 days you can harvest. But we don't want to harvest. We want buckwheat to grow 30 days. If you don't find anything, grow buckwheat and rye. So, and bad soil, buckwheat is the best cover crop to start with. And phaselia, yeah, that's a legume. And if you have honey, if you wanted to collect honey or have honeybees, phaselia will be one of the crop or cover crop you need to grow in the field. So you can have nitrogen, lot of nitrogen, good root, and it will make a good structure and also it will produce nice beautiful flower and with the nectar so you can collect honey. Cherry veg and Austrian winter pea, these are extremely good cover crop for especially for ground cover like it March and also nitrogen. These are legumes. These are finest cover crop you can use and rotate within the system, but you have to grow some of them in the fall, some of them in the summer. So you have to think when you are going to plant. Look at that two combination, two combination. This one is sun hemp, sun hemp is legume, and this is carol, uh, sorry, this is uh, radish. So what it does, the radish gives fast, 
and it gives carbohydrate and sugar to the microbes <coughs> and microbes help the legume that is the sun hemp to fix nitrogen so it's a synergistic effect give and take so legume and and radish and radish is very good you know for deep rooted penetration and removing compaction it produces a lot of sugar and sun hemp will produce a lot of nitrogen and in September or October, look at this picture that is in October, end of October, 31st of October 2010, sun hemp is like that. So most of the green cover you have at the end of the year is reddish. So you still you have cover. So that's what we wanted to extend the cover on the soil. What kind of reddish is that? It's a wild seed radish. A lot of people will say tillage radish groundhog radish you go for oil seed radish daikon radish that means you want 30 inches deep those kind of radish and if you plant radish never plant more than two pounds some people will so plant 10 pounds 30 pounds no if you have uh, 10 or 20 pounds you will have narrow very small uh, radishes but if you have two pounds you will get a giant one, monster one, the big one and long one. That's what you need. To How much sun hemp? Pardon? What's the population of the sun hemp? Around 25 to 30 pounds. But if you go with a cocktail mix, then you don't need that much. I'll show you as we move on. And another one is cowpea and oat. So if you mix cowpea and oat, oat is a grass. And cowpea is a legume. You know, in Africa, the most important protein source is cowpea. <coughs> Even in this country, we eat cowpea, that is black eyed pea, is cowpea, an excellent source of protein. So, this is a combination excellent for hay, or forage, or anything you wanted to grow, feed it with anyone. It's a very fast growing. And if you have drought, <coughs> grow cowpea. Dry season, cowpea. And if it is wet, then go for winter bee. And also radish, as I mentioned, look at this radish, how they grow and move the soil out and crack the soil. Look at here, how they make the crack. And when it get, try to crack more, it becoming twisted because that much energy it needs to penetrate the soil. It got cracked. So now we are thinking that radish is good, but why we are not using some kind of carrot? Carrots are more deeper and sweet. And sweet means sugar, sugar means microbes. And colored vegetable means more vitamins, <coughs> more flavonoids. So it will attract different types of microorganisms in soil. And which would be very good for organic production system or natural production system. So we are trying one at a time or two at a time and then try to mix it up in a cocktail. So again, earlier we said why we plant cover crop, now we said why we plant cocktail. So look at the difference. If you have cocktail, it's a biological primer. That means different types of crop need to regulate the biodiversity, molecular biology of the soil, and affect different types of organisms, different types of insects. It's diversified and they started to control both above ground and bio, below ground control. So it improved the solar energy use efficiency. That means if you grow different types of cover crop, it will maximize the absorbance of light to produce biomass. That's what we need. And it provides extended ground cover. That means whatever ground cover we have, we wanted to extend that longer period. And also it add diverse organic matter, organic residues. When you eat your lunch, you don't want bread only, you want different types of food. You want meat, cheese, bread, exactly the same thing. Those tiny microorganisms, they want those kind of food to grow and diversify. And also it improves. If you have no-till problem, we you know the no-till has a lot of nitrogen immobilization, compaction, and 
all kinds of problems. So if you have cover crop cocktail, the no-till function or the performance will improve. And last of all, overall it enhances the ecosystem. And again, if cocktail is good for also bee, honeybee. But we don't recommend that you grow this kind of cocktail or mix every year, maybe once in a five year. That's all. So look at that Ohio Farmer Journal, they covered one of our research and it shows a single cover crop is a good start. But if you have multiple species, it will give you more and more benefits. So look at that. And in this one, we have sunflower, we have uh, Sudan sorghum grass, and we have uh, oil seed radish. We have some have different types of plants in this mix. How do you keep your seed from becoming a weed? That's what. That's a good question. What we do? We grow cover crop or mix cover crop such a way that it can be killed by winter. So we don't have to, it will not produce any seed. So it will die before winter or it will be what you call sterilized. You can say the seed will not fall. At best it can produce some flower. Because we don't want buckwheat or something from seed and hard coated seed and then carry over. We don't want that. So mixing will be such a way that it can be knocked out by cold. We'll move on, we'll show you slowly. Look at that uh, cover crop mix we have last year in, at Farm Science Review. So this one, here we have sunflower, we have Sudan gra grass, we have cabbage, then we have sun hemp. What else we have? We have oats and we have clover, radish. So different mix we added in this one at farm size review last year. But if you make a more long shot, look at that picture. That's September? From August to September, is that what this is Yeah, yeah, at farm size. So this is radish, sun hemp, this is uh, sunflower, and then cabbage, and all these, yeah, cabbage. Sometimes it's hard to recognize because it's so different story. When was that planted? I just planted in August, early August. I would say end of July. Dave Brand, one of the farmers, you can see this big guy. He with us does a lot of research and grow cover crop. And he has different types of mix, four mix, six mix seven, eight mix, look at that. It has different kind of mixing. And again, why we want mixing of cover crop? Because to capture maximum sunlight. So we can have a lot of biomass. Look at the blend of 10 cover crops. And this is the ratio, somebody was asking how much. Look at here. Sun hemp, five pounds, cow pea, 15 pounds, Austrian winter pea, five pounds, pearl millet, five pounds, sunflower, one pound, radish, two pounds. So we don't want so much. We want such a way that we can maintain overall growth and the, cover, ground, the ground coverage. This is 12 species in little bit in South Dakota, look at that field, 12 different types of species. So if you have this kind of cover crop, how are you going to grow wheat? Think about that. So as I mentioned, wheat you cannot take right away, but it will take some time to take it out, out of competition, resource, suppression, and chemical, they'll release, these plants release chemicals, and that suppress the germination of wheat seed. So this is some of the examples what we have. Yes, please. What uh, pH does the soil need to be produced? What pH? Yeah. Normally around 5.5 to 7.5. 7.5 to 
standard range. So we did some study on that uh, uh, cover crop that how much biomass we can get. So look at that. This is the experiment we have. No till without any cover crop. And no till with first system of cover crop we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cover crop mix. And we applied 42 pounds of seed per acre. We got seven point four tons of dry residues, dry per acre. So that's what I said. You go up every four or five years, you don't have to go every year. So if you have seven tons of residue on your ground, I mean, how wheat is going to grow? It will be covering the field, a dry one. And if you have fresh one, you have 20, power, 20 tons. And look at the second one, which we use 44 pounds, nine different types of cover crop, but it didn't produce that much. That means, again, mixing a lot of cover crops will not guarantee you to produce a lot of biomass. So you have to think about the mixing, suitable mixing and the right combination. The six way mix, we use this one, 117 pounds of seed, but it didn't produce that much. It produced 5.3 tons. But think about the cost of that uh, seed. 117 pounds. We don't want that kind of cover crop to be uh, applied to your field, uh, very expensive. We don't want that. And the last one, 80 mix, 82 pounds. It produced 4.7 tons. So that gives you an idea that I have to go with this one or this one. I don't need to apply hundreds of pounds and spend hundreds of dollars for growing cover crop only. So that gives an idea, economic idea, of which one would be good to use as a cover crop. And you can roll the cover crop with the cramper or just planter, and then you can plant right away within the cover crop. We found it doesn't create any problem. I mean, if you use this kind of planter. And when you roll the cover crop, especially rye, and before you grow soybean, look at the mulch, the good mulch we have, that is rye. And then we grow soybean, look at the height and the yield of soybean. Rye is, an, another, rye is an, another cover crop which suffers weeds like a thick mulch, and rye has a lot of lignin cellulose material, it doesn't decompose fast, so if you want mulch, you roll it, when they started to make the, I mean the flower and all the, that, that time you kill them or roll it over. So it will make a nice good mulch for longer time. And before soybean is perfect. So don't grow rye before you plant corn. Then you have to kill rye early enough. Otherwise it will affect your corn. Look at radish, I, I mentioned you earlier. Look at the size of the radish, that's what you need. 30 inches deep and this radish I got and put it in the lab and I tried to see how long it takes to grow the fungus. Within 48 hours, look at this, these are fungus, these are not root. Anything grows pure white, cotton white, that is fungus. And roots are always little bit brownish. So within 48 hours, look at that, how they grow and the close-up picture, look at that. Because these fungus, they are looking for sugar, they want to survive, they need food, that's why they grow. So we need a crop which can penetrate deep, remove compaction, provide a lot of sugar to other plants and also release some chemicals. You know that if you grow radish, and when they die during the winter, you'll get smell of natural gas leakage. Yeah, in, in Western Illinois, I got the news from Chicago Tribune that one of the, don't take it otherwise, one of the lady, she filed a lawsuit against a farmer. That guy was growing well-seed radish, 
few hundred acres and during the winter time it died and smells when the rot started to rot so she thought this guy is doing something wrong a case was filed because of smell but that smell is nothing it's a natural pesticide called isoglucosinate and that kills a lot of your disease causing organism and it also replaces methyl bromide it's perfect to use as a substitute and since I talked about biology look at the biology we have a big organic grant for three years USDA funded and we showed yesterday some of the results we use pest abundance in no till CT means conventional tillage no till NT means no till so we use cover crop multiple cover crop in both system in conventional till system in no till system pest little bit more pest in no till system because we just started one year experiment little bit more but if you look at the slide to the left I mean to the right you will find the predator abundance in no-till system with cover crop lot of predators so you need that so it can kill the other bad organism or disease causing organism or insects so that already started to show the biology of the soil changes by the cover crop yes oh I mean pest means those are disease causing organism mostly and predator means it has all kinds of organisms some of them may be disease causing some of maybe disease suppression but although little but not significant pest but look at the uh, I mean the diversity of predator in the nodule with cover crop is more because undisturbed and lot of uh, different cover crop material and this one the same result same uh, result from our one of our uh, project in conventional till and no till with cover crop the bacteria and fungus distribution look at that bacteria fungus ants and other components how diversified no till has more bacteria and if you look at the slide on your right that shows the biocontrol that means how much activity this bacteria can do and we have this experiment at three different locations in Ohio totally organic compared with no till conventional till with and without cover crop in python we don't have that much but if we look at total total bacteria is highest in python one of the highest west salem there is a fungus there is a farmer still for 12 years 12 or 14 years of certified organic and the last one is bowling green that is allen's research organic research plots that has one of the highest activity so you can see how disease suppression activity improved over time in different certified organic experiment with and without cover crop and this one same result, uh, experiment, result from the experiment again look at the channel diversity index that means the diversification of organism in soil the python has the highest number of organ different types not the total number different types of organism diversification and then west salem and then bowling green and we thought because python in the south a little bit warmer maybe that has some diversification effect from the temperature yes can you clarify this is an organic farm that's no-till or a conventional farm that was transitioned to organic? Python, we have transitional organic system based on no-till and conventional till with and without cover crop. And West Salem, same thing that farmer has conventional till and then he started no-till with, with and without cover crop as a transitional part. And Bowling Green, we have 12, 14 years of, 12 years of certified organic with no till and also conventional till with and without cover crop at Hartzell Farm, John Hartzell Farm. So that's why 
but again these are a little bit cold area so we measured this in july so temperature is a little bit effect on this one five ten degrees of south yes we drill it we did broadcast we drill it so if you do broadcast uh, you will get uh, 60 to 70 percent germination because birds will feed them and also insects and all this. But if you drill them, that's the best one. And always set your drill according to the size of the larger seed. Okay, so the if the seed hole is the larger one or the small one will automatically go. And when the large seed will germinate the small one will be automatically coming. You don't have to think about that. It will come. This is a no yeah. So look at also richness of organism. Look at that West Salem. That farmer says 14 years of uh, organic farming. He has more richness or diversity of organism. But this experiment we started for I mean, last year. So it will go for two more years. Oh, I have to log. Okay. Yeah, because of the you have to give a little bit more time. <laughs> so this is earthworm. Again, look at that. That nodule has more earthworm and python side has more earthworm. How the biology changes. And also the arthropod, all these insects again. No, we have this slide already. Okay. So we talked about biology, now we talk about organic matter. Again, this experiment, no till with cover crop, different types of mix. Look at that. This is only no till, the red one, all other are mixed. So how organic matter improve at different depth of soil, up to 12 inch depth of soil, how the organic matter has increased over time. This is active organic matter, also how it increase. This is carbon sequestration index, how carbon is accumulating compared to no-till only. No-till is good, but when you add cover crop, look at the result. The total nitrogen content that uh, no-till no -till cover crop group number two is the best to accumulate nitrogen. Right, the mixes, it has uh, six, eight, uh, five and nine <clears throat> and this is phosphorus adsorption and release how fast phosphorus is expensive and it would be expensive you see the all the phosphorus adsorption is more or less same but when they release no till with cover crop has more release of phosphorus for your plants those are coming from organic source not from fertilizer and look at this the loss of nitrogen and phosphorus how they can be controlled by cover crop, rye, spelt, and wheat. So I have to, I'll just pass through. Look at how phosphorus. This is the CC. This is the soil moisture. Look at the no till. The red one has less moisture compared to the cover crop. Cover crop has more moisture August 2nd, 2012 because of marching effect. Look at the temperature. No till or plowed, 107 degrees temperature. When you have cover crop, you have 87 to 88 degrees. So that is one of the cause loss of temperature. And then infiltration. So if you use cover crop, it enhances the drainage. You see the porosity, how they improve. Look at the structural stability. And if this is fungus, the white things are fungus, they try to bound soil into good aggregates. This is how root of cover crop binds soil particles into good aggregates. And this is uh, Bill Richard's farm, he was the NRCS chief, you know that, and he has controlled traffic. This is, this, these paths are like a concrete, uh, the uh, wheel goes again and again. And he grows reddish as a cover crop, look at that. How this cover crop radish penetrate this compaction and crack it, and how deep it can go? 
look at the uh, slide to your left, right. And the crop yield, the same experiment, we have no till with different mixes of cover crop. So control one is no till only. And the last one didn't perform that good. But look at mix one, two, three, four. They increase crop yield compared to no till only. So I'm almost done. Maybe one or two minutes. So we found that if you grow cover crop is good, but if you grow multiple cover crop, every five or four years, it's, that's really, really good. It will really enrich your soil. And to get more enrichment, we found zeolite is a natural compound abundant in the United States. And that is the real good material to hold nitrogen and phosphorus in soil. So you can maximize the nutrient absorption, minimize the nitrogen input. And this is in New Mexico. We have a lot of mines over there. And look at that, how they absorb this nitrogen and phosphorus, especially for organic system. If you add 100 pounds with your compost, that will give you tremendous effect. So you can cut down the compost or manure application, the amount. And this is the recent study we presented. Look at that, if you apply zeolite, and you increase the absorption of ammonia. So ammonium will not have chance to form nitrate. If you have nitrate, it will leach out from your soil, but it holds in the soil. And look at that, if you apply zeolite, you don't have nitrates. Higher level of zeolite takes most of the ammonia, so there is no chance to form nitrate. So this is certified by organic system. We are using that. And phosphorus, also phosphorus increase, absorption increase with zeolite. So in organic system, little bit of soil amendments, really, really good to enhance your nutrient cost. Did you, when did you apply that? Oh, if you apply manure or compost, again, once in every three, four, five years. You don't have to apply every year. So rules, this is the important one. Rules for cover crop cocktail. What, first thing you have to think that what kind of cover crops I'm going to use for what? Is it for honey or is it for biomass? Is it for nitrogen? Needs for what? And then crop rotation, what kind of crop you have and when you, you wanted to grow them. And also plant type and architecture. That means, is it a broadleaf broad leaf or narrow leaf? Is it a grass or legume? So that is important. And then carbon nitrogen ratio in the biomass. You want carbon nitrogen ratio little bit in the middle, 30 is to 1. You don't want 80 is to 1, there will be no nitrogen. But if you have 10 is to 1 or 8 is to 1, you will have a lot of nitrogen. You don't want that. You want balance. <coughs> So look at the chart. This chart gives you an idea how to select cover crop cocktail mix. That draw cool season, warm season, broadleaf, grass, legume. So it will give you an idea. Is that available online somewhere? No. Online or if you need, you can email me. Uh, you can email me so uh, that way I can send you the PowerPoint. So this is the most important uh, slide of the top. So when you mix cover crop, the top layer, the top layer, that should be pearl millet, sudan grass, or sorghum, only 20%. The tall one should be 20% in the mix. The middle one, sun hemp, or uh, sunflower, this type of middle story should be 20% maximum. So, and the lower level, that means cow pea, winter pea, clover, veg, radish, all this would be 50 to 60 percent. Because if you have tall cover crop, most of the field is covered with tall cover crop, then the lower, the smaller or smaller height cover crop will not get the light. So always mix, that is the way that tall cover crop should be only 20 percent. So light can go into the middle and middle should be 20%. So it will allow the light to the, go to the bottom level. So most of the cover crop should be shorter at the 
close to the ground or uh, two feet or three feet and four or five feet you should have middle that should be 20 percent and top six seven feet tall that should be 20 percent so that is the way you mix it up to maximize the light capturing and growth of biomass so conclusion i'm done so cover crop especially <coughs> cocktail impacted soil health is positive positive impact and that impact is more pronounced on no till than conventional till and soil biological properties more responsive to cover crop cocktail than chemical and physical and cover crop improve the structure and the functional comp uh, functional complexity of the food web and the last one is cover crop enhance biocontrol and soil health improvement doesn't mean that you are going to get bumper yield it will take time so first soil health will improve then your crop yield will improve so crop yield will not improve when soil is building up and the last one for organic production or natural it is important always start with a cover crop or a cocktail to control weed, maintain organic matter and improve coffee. So never start any good organic thing without a cover crop. So start with a cocktail, suppress all the weeds, take out the weeds, put a lot of organic matter, then your no-till or con organic system would be really, really, really good. I'm sorry for all this problem. <laughs>